Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the Deploy series. In this video, I'll walk you through that how you can install your own servers and can make it almost like Netlify or Vercel. And it's not really like Netlify or Vercel, it's even better than that. Yes, that's a bold statement, but it justifies that. In this video, I'll walk you through how you can use an open source project named Coolify and can install that on your own VPS and just forget about everything else. It does manage everything for you. Like, just like if you have deployed any application in the past, like Netlify or Vercel, and they do all the magic for you. Just point out your Git repository, Git domain from there, just pull the application from there, and it does all the magic for you. Exactly like that, we can set up whole things on our own. So let me just show you. And by the way, we have a common target as well. Not much, just 100 comments in this video, and I'll show you the whole magic of the Coolify. It's super easy to work on with this, but I need motivation, and that comes from the comment section. So just put that in the comment, not asking you much. There's not much of the fees, so go ahead and try that. So let me just share this one here. And I have spinned up a new uh, machine for us, which is this one, Ubuntu AP West, so feel free to have this. And once you click on this, this time we're not gonna be setting up any SSH or something, rather all of the application in DigitalOcean Linode provides you to launch this Lish console, which you click on this, there is some way or the another to open up this console. So it says, hey, you would like to log in? Yes, I would like to log in. And I can just log in as a root. And the password is going to be my password. And there we go. And that's it. You are now logged in with the root. So that's the step one. Now, after that, you have to go on to this Coolify uh, documentation. Everything comes from the documentation. So where we go. This is how the web page looks like. And you can see there are so many sponsors of this. You can see so many applications and so many features on this. It supports any language. You want to work with database, MySQL, Mongo, uh, Java-based application, JavaScript. It works on any server, EC2, DigitalOcean, Linode, Hetzner, wherever you want to go. Any case, you want to deploy Kubernetes is on the way, but Docker Swam, multiple servers, however you want to go. It's ridiculously powerful. The APIs, webhooks, DB backups, it's, it's crazy powerful. And you can go with their cloud version. Of course, the pricing comes with the cloud version, which is, I guess, pretty decent. $5 base price and $3 per additional server. Build monthly. But in case you are here watching the deploy series, then pretty sure you want to just do all the things self-hosted. And there's just one command to do so. I'll go and I'll ask you to go into the documentation because there are more steps involved in this one. Just click on the self-hosted one. And the same command is here. But... The more important thing is we are spinning up a very basic server, but this time we need two CPU, two GB RAMs. I'm not spinning that. I'm still spinning that same $5. It works decently there. I can show you the demo. But for real world application, at least two GB of RAM, that's the most important part of it. So go ahead and grab that. And then you can install anything and host anything. Superbase, AppRite, uh, PostHog, whatever you want, you can just go ahead and install that. So let me just go ahead and walk you through. And the best part is you don't need to do any kind of a hardening server and everything. They take care of most of the stuff. In fact, they require you to log in from the root to actually install this. Without the root, it doesn't work. Uh, you can try that with the user. I tried it. It doesn't work. So have to go with this. They somehow mentioned that non-logged in permissions and all these are coming up. I don't know where I read that, but I read it somewhere. Anyways, now I can just go ahead and come up here, paste this command and just get it up and running. Now this is going to take some time because it actually downloads a whole bunch of things from here and there. A lot of stuff comes in and you can see the permissions, open SSH and permission root login enabled, no snaps are installed, try snaps. So it does take care of everything. It knows everything that the open SSH server is there, uh, permit root login is enabled so that once everything is installed, it makes sure that however I want this server to be running with all the security and measures, it does that. So that's really nice. Although the knowledge that we have gathered is really important, but hey, this needs to do its job. This is going to take some time. So I'll probably pause the video here. There is no nothing of much value that I'm adding here just by showing you all these download steps. If it does it faster, that would be nice. I don't think so. It will do it faster. Anyways, let's pause the video here. All right, so finally, I uh, didn't took much of the time, uh, just a sip, couple of sip of water and it does the magic. So now you can see it has installed us so many of the things, real time database to whatnot and everything. Now it's asking us to go on to this URL, which is pretty simple, the URL and it runs on port 8000. Now a couple of interesting steps comes after that. 
So we can just go ahead and hit enter. Now it will ask us to register. This is the important one. So let's just go ahead and name it. So I'm going to name Hitesh and email is going to be Hitesh at chaicode.com. Password, I'll use the, my default password up here, which I've been using for this series for a while. All right, and I'm going to click on register. And there we go. It says get started. Yes, I want to get started. Now, although it's going to ask you a whole lot of step, I highly recommend you try it with your own. But I'm going to do is skip the onboarding. I don't want onboarding. I have done it so many times. Uh, you can go ahead and try this. You have been for a while in this series. Now, I'll just simply say skip onboarding. And I want to show you the superpower of this, the whole application. So notice here, right now it says dashboard and there is no project. Nothing is running. This is how it looks like the first. But on the left side, you can see there are tabs for projects. So you can go ahead and add projects. I'll walk you through with one of them. You can even add multiple servers. So this whole server can actually run multiple of other servers. So if you haven't spinned up more machines, you can just go ahead and connect them here. And this is going to be your one control panel to manage everything. Sources, you can go ahead and add sources, uh, your GitHub repository, anything that you want, you can just go ahead and add this as a resource. Destinations are there, where you want to send it. You can even connect the S3 storage. So all the Amazon S3 buckets and all these things, yes, they can seamlessly get connected. We also have options of uh, keys and tokens. If you want some of the common keys to be shared along multiple applications, you can go ahead and do that. There is even a command center, so you can run the commands to execute on the server with the local host, uh, however you want to go with that. Profile teams, onboarding, a whole lot of steps are there. Most of the time you'll be in the project section. Once you click on the add, you can name the project. I'm going to call this one as uh, React, React app. And I'm going to say this is a nice React app. That's all I have. Uh, but it's not just about React. You can install the backend application, databases, a whole lot of stuff is there. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue on this one. This is your first app. Now, once you click on the settings of this app, you can see you can add resources. And once you click on this add resources, this is where the craziness starts. So you can go up at the top. You can just mention any public URL. And then it will ask you what branch I should deploy. It will even deploy that, even put up an SSL certificate on that. And you can use private repositories. You can use Docker files, Docker Compose, Docker images. You can even spin up your own databases here. But it's not really wise to have the database on a, just a 1 GB of RAM. At least 2 GB or 4 GB is recommended. But hey, just one click and Postgres will be there. Dragonfly would be there. MongoDB on your own machine will be there. This goes a little crazy. So you can spin up the entire app, right? Probably I'll make a video on that dedicated one. And just have it all up and running. Even AppSmith is there. I know the founders of AppSmith and AppRight. That's why I'm mentioning them. But again, you can just go ahead and use Chatwood. I don't know what that is. Uh, so code server, pretty in interesting stuff. This is really nice. So you can have a whole lot of things. And the scroll bar, it's, it's a lot of them. You can go ahead and try this out. Let me just quickly find if I can find any React application on my repository, if I can. All right, but I'm not sure that this application will work because most of my applications are packed inside one gigantic repository. Uh, lots of further small apps are there because of the courses, but I think this one will work fine. So I can just go ahead and copy this GitHub repository if it works. And same way you can just install Express app, Django app, whatever you want. You can just go ahead and install just like that. So this is the project I never mentioned. Uh, you can create more environment by the way, production and uh, like testing environment, a whole lot of that. I can just click on the public repository and the public repository, I can mention the URL and I'll say check repository. And this one says main, uh, Nix pack is good and 3000 port is good. And you can choose other packs as well, static, Nix file, whatever. For majority of the node based application, Nix pack is good enough. And port 3000, yep, seems good. I'll click on the continue and there you can see a lot of gazillion option opens up. This will be my application name. Pretty good. Nixpack and the domain is going to be this long domain, which is good enough, but you can actually go ahead and just put up a comma and add more domains if you want to. Allows redirection, good enough. Not going to be bothered much about it. Network, good enough. So all the things are being taken care of me. Uh, apart from this, there are advanced options for auto deploy, preview deployment, force HTTPS. There are even environment variables that you can go ahead and add more. Like for example, the port is one environment variable for me. 
uh, the storage, source, you can just see all these options are there. It would be impossible for me to just go ahead and have this. Uh, right now, I'll just click on general and I'll see just if we can just click on the deploy. Now it says no logs yet and eventually it starts to deploy that and says, oops, something wrong, uh, slash artifact upstream. I'm not sure whether it was okay as an application because I know this was just a test application and the commit ahead. I'm not sure whether the application is good. I have so much of the stuff going on on my, but you get the idea how this is needs to be deployed in configuration and just wanted to show you all these options. And if you have any React application, just go ahead and try this out. Just wanted to show you how the Coolify works. And this is your own uh, application server up here now. So this is React app. I can just click on settings and just remove it if I wish to. But you get the whole point of why this application and why this video even exists. You can have as much as you like. And the best part what I like about is in the projects, I can just go ahead and have an add project. Just call it as test. Let's try to spin up a MySQL here. So let's just go ahead and at least show you something here. MySQL, it would be fun to have. And I'll click on continue. And let's see if this small teeny tiny server allows us to have uh, a resource of MySQL or Postgres even better. Let's go ahead and see Postgres. And I have all these options, Postgres username, and I can even see the password. If I want to connect that, I can keep it in the same network. Let's start that. Not a good idea to start this onto a very small server, but I think it can do a decent job in at least having this. And there we go. If my GitHub would have a nice application on the React, probably I can just quickly create it, push it, but you can do that as well. And it says database started. There we go. Told you it's super, super easy. And now within just few clicks, now we have a resource which is running and we have a MySQL, we, not MySQL, we have a Postgres SQL. The image is there, the name is there, the username is there, password is there, initialized database is there. What more do you want from an application? Oh man, this is, this is really, really nice. And we have storage, everything. So I told you, it's super easy, although it's not MySQL, it's a Postgres, but hey, nothing to be worried on. So I told you it's really nice and whenever you want, you can just go ahead and see all of your projects. So we have now MySQL, which ultimately runs a Postgres. We have a React app. We can even connect them each other. So that's really nice. I'll go ahead and click on this one here. And this one is production. I'll just go inside this. Danger zone, will delete it. Don't want to consume much of the resources. That's good enough. And that's how you delete the environment. Continue, please delete that. Project, we can go same way in the React, although it didn't work, should have chosen the better application. <laughs> but you get the idea of how it's being done. Danger zone, delete it, continue please. Delete the environment, of course please. And now I can go into the project, go back up here and delete the project. Go ahead and delete this. This one also needs to be deleted. And there we go. So this is the way how you can have this. And Coolify is a really, really nice project to work on with. You can have your own servers, deploy as many application on uh, Next.js, React, Vite, Vue, whatever you wish, you can just go ahead and deploy that. Not only limited to the JavaScript ecosystem, you can even throw up the application which uses Java resources or Python resources and can do a whole bunch of things. I know the video is really short, but there is nothing much more to talk about it. I just, just don't want to drag the videos. I want to just keep it short, precise, informative, and want to give you something to try on. So go ahead, try out the Coolify. It's really a nice resource on the deployment segment. And if there is any more that you want me to cover in this as playlist, just let me know. I'll add those videos in the playlist. That's it for this video. Let's catch up in the next one.